often see a lot of people getting confused about my relationship with Christ and also the the reason for that is that their relationship with Christ is very tangled up in dialect, in language, in speech. And Christ, in relationship to awakening from the matrix, is the framework I want to discuss this within. I'll use language that is unfamiliar to the majority of us when we hear the term Christ. But it's very important, I feel, that I use language that gives clarity for myself so I can speak clearly. And so what is the role of Christ in this awakening? Because the awakening that we speak of is the awakening from the matrix. Well, these two terms don't go together often, Christ and the awakening from the matrix. And so before we go further, we need to define what words mean. Because the nature of our reality is not words. The words that I use and you use point at the nature of our reality. And sometimes our words can trigger, instead of the observation of reality, our mind and its perceptions and memories around a certain word. And that interferes with observing reality. And so what is meant by Christ? Christ is pointed at with the term Christ by Jesus, by Yeshua, and by the writers of the Bible. But what it is, is the energy that can transform a human being to become more compassionate, loving, charitable, and supernaturally powerful inside this realm. A human being who has never learned language, never heard language, can be transformed by that energy. And to that human being, the transformation of them into the more compassionate human vessel is beyond language. It's still transforming them. But they've never learned language or heard language. The energy is still transforming the human being. This nameless force of love is still transforming the human vessel into a more compassionate vessel. That nameless energy that transforms the human has been pointed at and labelled by humanity as Christ. Christ points at that transformative energy, nothing else. Any other imagery and ideas that you get from the word Christ is coming from your perceptions and your mind because originally the word merely pointed at the transformational energy that converts a man to be more loving and compassionate and live for the will of unconditioned love, not the will of the self and selfish ambition and the worldly identity. That's what Christ means. Where does Jesus fit there? Jesus was a bringer of that energy, a manifestation of the dimension of the birthplace of that energy we are calling Christ inside the third dimension. He brought that energy here into the third dimension and left the message of what a human should look like when they too access that energy which is beyond this dimension, when they access the energy of the heavens, as it is said. What is meant by the matrix? The matrix points at 
the human inside the third dimension who identifies with the third dimension as all that they are. This is the matrix identity and the system that pushes the human into those perceptions is also an extension of that matrix. Yeshua said this, the world is a fallen world and humanity is a fallen species. We are only fallen when we identify with the third dimension, with all that is, and identify with an identity built around the third dimension being all that there is. The human vessel who creates a self-image based upon the 3D identity, based upon the worldly self, is a fallen human, is living in the matrix identity. They are not awake to the full truth of their power because they haven't awoken to the dimension that the Christ energy, as we've pointed at this energy with that terminology, is from. In other words, they have lived by the flesh, by the perceptions of the technology of the body, instead of by the perceptions of the soul, which is inside of the body and animating it. And the soul has a home in another dimension. These are the terms and these are what they mean. Anything else you add into there is largely perception of the mind or religious paraphernalia. Yeshua pointed at that term, those of the Bible pointed at that term to mean this energy. It was given the name Christ, but that energy, as I've said, can transform a human who does not know language and has never heard language. It'll still transform them. And to that human, it has no name. But what matters is the artifact, is the reality of it transforming, not what we think about it and not the mental game. And this is the trap of the matrix. We live in the mind or the carnality, as it is said in uh, Yeshua's terms. The carnal mind is enmity to the laws of God, meaning it's not subject to God's law. The, the ability to observe and see reality without the carnal mind is the ability to bring in the essence of the Christ because at that moment you see through the matrix. This term of the human being transformed, the human vessel that is transformed by observing the reality we are in and the unity it brings into the consciousness, the oneness with all that it brings to you, has therefore the arising of a transformative energy inside us which transforms the human into a more compassionate, loving being that lives by the will of an unconditioned love. We call that energy Christ. The process of that transformation is the rebirth that Yeshua, an avatar, a bringer of the dimension of Christ into this third dimension, the rebirth is that transformative process. It is the human being born into the sonship or being parented by the higher dimension of Christ, not the third dimension of the human technology that the soul is inside of. So these are the terms and anything else, anything else is religious paraphernalia when it brings up other terms inside your mind. This is what it is. And so if we look at this, the matrix is the 3D reality. Now let's say there are 12 dimensions of consciousness. From the times that I have moved into other dimensions to clear negative energies from people, I am going to say there are 12 dimensions of consciousness and I'm not alone in this. We are in the third dimension. The second dimension is the structure of the third, the crystalline, the plant life, etc. The rocks, so on. The fourth dimension is, and the dimensions blend together. There's not a perfect wall to separate them. But the fourth dimension is the home 
of the oppressor of this world, the third dimension. It is the home of the fallen angels, as the Bible calls them, or Satan. The prince of the third dimension, as Jesus said, the prince of the third dimension is Satan. The prince of this world is Satan. The fourth dimension is the dimension of the rooting of the fallen ones of Satan. They, in their arrogance, have fallen in love with sensuality and pleasure and touch. And this is labeled the demonic realm by Christians. They have, and I say they, because I've seen a species there, they have an influence on the third dimension. The demonic has an influence on the world. The realm of the fallen ones has an influence on the third dimension. When we live inside the 3D identity, the identity of the human vessel alone and its technology, we are living in a fallen state. And we are therefore under the governance and catchment of the beings of the fourth dimension. And they do have power here. They do. Now you can say that their influence on the third dimension is through a spiritual power. If those are the terms you wish to point at that energy with. I feel that it's hard to divide the spiritual power and technological power. And I feel the fourth dimensional beings influence on the third is a mixture of what we would call technological and spiritual. We have said the spirit realm is a higher dimension. The spirit realm is another realm to this one. It's another dimension. And so those human beings who identify with the matrix self, they are under the governance of the flesh or of the perceptions of the slave technology of the body, as I've called it recently. The fallen nature of the body is the slave element, not the creation in general, but that element of us that makes us believe that we are only a 3D identity. The fourth dimensional beings, in biblical terms, Satan has influence over us. Our ability to connect to the twelfth dimension, which I am going to say is the dimension of Christ, is dependent upon a rebirth, as Jesus said. That rebirth means that we must forget the 3D identity completely. And Yeshua showed this by saying you must forget your mother, your father, your husbands, your wives, your brothers, your sister, your children. You must forget them all if you are to follow me. What that means is that in this 3D realm, Buddha called the 3D realm Maya, an illusion. Yeshua calls it a fallen world. The 3D identity is not who you are. Your soul is who you are. To identify with the technology of the human vessel alone, its mind, its perceptions of sight, you must walk by faith, not by sight is to walk by sight, is to, is to maintain a perception that is 3D. And we are aiming to achieve a higher dimensional perception. The, the human who lives from the perceptions of the 12th dimension, if we can say that, the human who lives from the dimension of Christ, which we are saying is the 12th dimension, Christ pointed at that human by saying they are born of the Spirit. And that human will be called a son or a daughter of God. Those who are born of the Spirit are the sons of God, Yeshua said. If your child is to be parented by you, they must be brought up under your governance and guidance for you to be called their parent. For a human being to be called a son of God, they must be governed by the perceptions of the dimension of that presence. The dimension of Christ, the twelfth dimension, is how we're labeling it here. If the human is moving from the perceptions of the third dimension, from the world, from the matrix, then we, we could say that using that terminology, that that human is not a child of God, for all they are part of the whole and loved by God, 
because they are choosing as a parent the perceptions of the 3D identity. Yeshua is the one who brought from the 12th dimension into the 3rd dimension the pathway, the opening for humanity. We can say it that way. He was one who brought a pathway from the 12th dimension of Christ to the 3rd dimension where we are enslaved by the fallen ones. And in our fallen nature, which I mull over potentially, is a technological interference in the anatomy that we are. Therefore, the perceptions of the third dimension, they have to fall away. And this is where we face a problem. Because it's very hard to make them fall away. Because when they fall away, the vessel's identity is over. The vessel wishes to identify as nationality, as name, as family, as relationship, as academic achievement, etc. All these things are needed but they cannot be the identification by which the intelligence and action of the human body is motivated from. When the intelligence of the human body is motivated from the image, the 3D identity of relationships and academic achievement and nationality and what the education programmed into the vessel when that happens, the human being is asleep to their full state. And therefore, if you look at what Yeshua said, the man born of spirit will live by a different set of rules, a supernatural set of rules. The human who lives inside the matrix identity will live by a worldly set of rules. The problem here is that that human will live in a vibration largely of separation and not touching on an experience of unconditioned love. And so in there the vibratory state of the soul inside the human body does not exceed the vibratory state of the fourth dimensional influence on this world and therefore the God of this world is certain to those people. Yeshua came from the twelfth and manifest in human form in the 3D. He said, greater works than I will, you will do, for I will have gone to the Father. Because now there's a pathway from the 12th dimension to the third. You don't have to carve a pathway. You can fall into that pathway and expand upon it and therefore bring greater works into this world than what he did. Because the path is open from the 12th to the third. The transformative energy of Christ travels down a column of white light from the 12th dimension to the 3rd. We all have that column. The problem is that that column becomes blocked by many higher dimensional forces who are blocking it. And therefore the human vessel becomes amnesic of its soul identity and is totally locked into the body identity. We call that ego. Ego is identification with the body and the mind and its activity, not identification with the truth of the allness that you are. The soul that you are, in its essence, is connected to God. That is known and seen when you see through the illusion. When you see through the illusion of the matrix, you begin to open up. You expand because you feel oneness. That oneness creates an expansive state of creativity in the heart, from what I've seen. And, and that expansive state of creativity is giving way for the higher vibrations whereby we can start to access the twelfth dimension of Christ being that which motivates and stimulates the activity of our intelligence and action. Not the 3D. Thanks to the love, support and sharing of the community that has followed us here on YouTube, we have been able to build a village for special needs children in crisis out in Tanzania. Our family in Tanzania is now made up of nearly 200 children. Most of these children have disabilities and most of these children are among the most marginalised human beings in our human story. 
You have seen the suffering on this channel, I won't go over it, but these children had no access to housing, medical care, some were abandoned, and they certainly didn't get quality care, some of them. It is only thanks to the love, support, and the partnership of persons in this community that we have been able to make this family a reality, that we have been able to bring these children out of the dark and into the light where they belong. To all who have partnered with what we do, thank you for your love and support. We simply can't do what we do without you. If you are not involved in our family and you are interested in helping us to eradicate this problem that we face inside the human story, eradicate this problem that these children are facing and don't need to face, then we have launched a new partnership program. If you visit www.sharetanzania.com forward slash partnership, you will see all of the details there. Ultimately, these partnerships help us to sustain our family, to provide everything we need to these children to make sure they are happy. And in return with that, we will provide you with regular updates and a newsletter every month as well, so as you can see exactly how your act of love and sharing is impacting the world and the lives of these children in the same way that I get to see it. Okay, that was all. Thank you for the love and support, guys. And action, not the 3D. And so when we connect to that dimension of Christ, the unconditioned love of Christ will animate the activity and the intelligence of the human vessel. When we connect in the third dimension, the worldly will animate. Most of the time, the worldly will animate you to seek pleasure, it will seek to satiate the flesh and the pull of the technology of the body will have dominance over you because your connection to the 12th dimension is so weak. Those who follow Yeshua, they start to align their life to live in a way where the vibration will start to elevate because if you follow the teachings correctly of Yeshua, you will not identify with the third dimension anymore. You will identify with your soul, with the spirit dimension, the twelfth dimension of Christ. When you do that, the activity of your life will be different. Selfish ambition will fall away. Uh, lust, greed, it will fall away. The desires of the vessel become the desires of the realm of the soul. And if those desires are not manifesting, it's because you are trapped in the matrix identity of the 3D identity, not the 12D of Christ, of spirit. The problem we face is there are endless Christians, but not many have let go of the 3D identity. And rather they have a mixture. They have added into this 3D identity the concept of this journey through the dimensions into their lives because Yeshua told us this is what a human will look like when they are born again and, and make that connection to that 12th dimension of Christ. And so we start using the 3D identity, which is a great fight, to try and apply that way of life to our lives. And so we try to be more charitable, we try to be uh, more loving, we try to be more temperate, etc. And it's really a deep battle. And bit by bit, this can raise you up to that connectivity of that higher dimension of Christ. It can do it. But it's very difficult to do that. And so what happens is with most humans is they end up with a mixture of a 3D identity, trying to live out the 12D identity. Meanwhile, they don't ever really walk through to the 12th dimension. They don't do it. They stay in the 3D, aware of this through the teachings, trying to achieve this through the teachings, but never quite letting go of the 3D identity in the matrix self, and so therefore never getting that true expansiveness. And many awaken to that, and they call it non-duality. And Buddha clearly denoted awakening to the matrix, but he didn't denote the transformation of the vessel's activity being governed by the higher dimension. This is the part he missed out. This is the part Yeshua did not miss out. Those who wake up into non-duality have woken up into the truth that the identification with this body and its form, with the identification with this reality as a separate entity, as a separate 3D image, 3D identity inside your mind, is an illusion. It's false. 
And when you awaken from that, you sense this vast connectivity with all that is. And that vast connectivity is the starting place of the journey to the Christ dimension being that which animates the intelligence of your body. And it must happen. A sense of absolute unity and oneness will come to those who awaken into Christ, awaken from the matrix and begin the awakening stages to connect to that highest dimension, the will of unconditioned love, the twelfth. And if you're following how I see this with this linguistic term, the people who are blended between 3D identity and trying to live out the Christ identity, the problem is that there needs to be that falling away, the rebirth has to be pointed at. Now the rebirth takes away the space inside us that's used up on that 3D identity, and that then is free to be programmed by that energy that we point at with the term Christ that can come from the 12th dimension, and it can, it can change the human. We're trying to change the human with the program of the 3D identity through our will like this, and this doesn't work. It has to be a transformation of the energy of the 12th illuminating you, and this is pointed at with grace in, in some terminologies, the grace of God. And so, when you realize what's going on in the 3D identity, which is the matrix identity, which is the fallen identity, which is influenced by the demonic realm, the fourth dimensional species that is influencing this third dimension. When it comes time to awaken from that, everything must fall away in consciousness at some point. And so that means the vessel has to be completely empty of any identification with the 3D. And that's very tough because it includes, as I say, your, your parenting, your children, etc. It doesn't mean that you don't love them. It actually means you bring perfect love. Because when you do that, finally there's space to travel through to the 12th dimension and have that as the foundation of the activity of your intelligence. What happens, though, is we bolt it on. Nationality, academic achievement, born again Christian. And we run this program and it's a struggle. It's a fight. And you witness it because the love's not there. And the sense of unity is not there. When you take away that polarized identity, which is part of the technology of the fallen human state, which is what happened to Adam and Eve when they bit of the tree, the tree, they bit of it, and now they have the knowledge of polarity. When you take away that polarized element of the technology of your body, when you take that away, you, you see the unity of it all, and the illusion of separation is gone. The illusion of separation is the birthplace of the 3D identity that conditions love. The unconditional love of the 12th dimension of Christ will come to the third dimension. And before it gets a chance to animate the activity, speech and intelligence of the human vessel, the program of duality will interfere with it and place conditions upon that energy and place conditions upon that love. And so this is where people get muddled up about, well, there is evil, so non-duality is nonsense. Yes, there is darkness in this world, no doubt. But until your consciousness awakens to the connectivity of the heart of God, which, in all of its infinite gratitude, had to give way for all of infinite potential, until you connect to there, you can't begin the journey to reconnect fully through the dimensions of consciousness with the Christ, the twelfth dimension. And so it's part of the rebirth where you have that moment of everything is unity. Because in that unity, now you have the capacity when you look at an elitist and you have been judging them your life, oh, they're oppressing me, they're hurting me. Now all of a sudden you look at them and you see that you are all interconnected and therefore bringing love to them is far easier because your judgment has fell away. It doesn't mean that you don't see that their behavior is wrong, your discernment remains but your judgment passes. Imagine you're a child, someone steals from you. It traumatizes the 3D identity. Now you're a grown man and a thief needs your love to heal them. And you recall this trauma and so you condition your love and say, I'm not doing it. That's coming from the polarized 3D identity. When you release that fallen state, 
He released the fallen state that Adam and Eve moved into. Adam, Atom, Eve, Electron, the beginning of all life, the splitting of the atom. When you, when you release that polarized state, you move into the unity. And you see at that point, through the matrix, you see the illusion of the matrix that you're identifying with. And then you have an option, you can stay there or you can find a new identity. And that identity should be in the soul realm, the realm of Christ, the higher dimensions, the heavens, as Jesus called it, or the spirit. Spirit should become your father. Buddha spoke of that awakening from the matrix, but Buddha, unlike Yeshua, did not speak of the journey to the father, that his father was not of this world. Buddha left it there, and that's what I say, this is the beginning. Awakening is not that. Awakening is not merely non-duality, that's all there is. There's a deeper depth to it, and that begins when we start aligning the, the, the attention of ourselves to that higher dimension of Christ through the pathway that was carved by men like Yeshua, because others have carved it too since. And so the program of the matrix self is reliant on this polarized identity. It's reliant on the technology that was put into you when Adam and Eve fell, when man fell, when the serpent came, when the fourth dimension arguably, potentially, genetically modified the human to have that polarized situation going on where it generates this polarized 3D identity. And they did so because in that polarized 3D identity, the essence of your soul is still connected even though you're amnesic of it, and they want that energy. They want to drink that energy of spirit, and they drink it because that identity, identifying only with the 3D, feels misery and so it pursues pleasure and as it pursues pleasure its vibration becomes tight and the soul is pushed out of the driving seat of the human vessel and they can then step into the driving seat of the body and make use of that energy when we align to the christ dimension as the birthplace of the animation of the activity of our intelligence the spirit we are now having a clear connection to the origin of our soul. And because of that, we now have dominion over the fourth dimension. We are now living from a higher dimension and bringing the essence of that higher dimension into the third. Yeshua denoted this, that those who know the Christ will drive out demons. Of course, the fourth dimensional beings that possess and inhabit the third dimensional humans can't be driven out by a 3D identity because the vibrations trapped largely in the 3D beneath the 4D. When the human awakens to the Christ, then they can have dominion because they are coming from a higher dimension. And they then can drive out these beings from themselves and from others around them. The program of the matrix self is therefore reliant on separation and a pol polarized identity. So we have to look what is the birthplace of separation to get free from that matrix 3D identity, the fallen identity, the identification with the flesh, as Yeshua called it, the identification with the perceptions of the alien slave technology or the fourth dimensional slave technology that we are in. The world was once beautiful, but it's been tampered with by a fallen state. And even the Bible warns you of that with Lucifer's fall, with the fallen angels. The beginning of separation can be seen if you watch slowly yourself. When you feel immense happiness and joy or immense love, the character that you perceive yourself to be is not there. You are merely at that moment happiness manifest in this shape that we have called human. You are that. You are not John being happy at the time, at the very instant you're happy and loving. It's not there. The character's not there. Now what happens is the following day, because the, we're in the realm 3D is time, there's a dimension of time here, we look back and we say, I was so happy and loving yesterday. And here we begin the construction of the polarized 3D identity in the technology of the body because who is this I was? This I was is, is your memory. 
it's it's the memory incorporated into this concept of this 3d notion of time and so the I was is a memory and so you begin to construct a self 3d image of who you are a fallen image of who you are the fallen identity within you based on your memory and so to be free of that because the I was is only your memories we have to acknowledge that the memory is not who we are because if I take memory out of you you will still progress through your life you will forget where your house is etc but you'll still be alive and so you are not your memories the system is training us to be a memory it's training us to be a person a linear progressive consciousness freedom from that is a state of consciousness that is actually without time it's to see the world without language and memory the matrix identity therefore is completely reliant on you regurgitating the linear progressive state of consciousness therefore all of your relationships and what you do is you fall back on that worldly uh, 3d self-image to make your decisions to do your selfish ambitions etc instead of falling back on the 12th dimension the will of Christ for your life the will of spirit for your life and so the truth was given by Yeshua and I do follow Christ I know it that the 12th dimension of Christ is what I rest upon I don't rest upon a worldly self-image anymore that transformative energy that comes through us can only come when you stop identifying as well with the 3d image because the 3d image won't walk by faith it'll walk by sight the 12th dimension of Christ will come with a message to you and it may get through and say listen I want you to go here and Yeshua told you you will have power to cast out demons you will pray in tongues you will have the power to heal that God will be with you have faith you will have no fear there will your spirit of fear will be replaced with a spirit of love and yet the 3d identity will disguise its spirit of fear and go I, I, I can't do that fear disbelief lack of faith and here we have the problem that that program keeps us locked in the third dimensional identity and stops the power of Christ manifesting and freeing humanity in this third dimension as it should be and therefore we must begin to teach and share that the rebirth Christ pointed at is the vessel returning itself without any identity in a state of consciousness to an energy beyond this dimension that will transform it and we have pointed at that energy with the term Christ and Yeshua brought that message and Yeshua carved that path and you may now connect to that path and widen it and do greater works and so Yeshua's role in awakening you from the matrix the Buddha showed you what the matrix was Yeshua has shown you the fallen world of the matrix but Yeshua has shown you that you may align the the foundation that animates your intelligence into the realm of the spirit or the 12th dimension of Christ and so that is the role of Christ in awakening from the matrix this is it that's the role in the relationship we must begin to see that most of us are so obsessed with the technology of the human body and the thought form and the labels that we put on things that we never move to that journey to the 12th dimension because we get hung up on the symbols on the 3d identification on the time we get hung up on that and as we get hung up on that we miss what the words are pointing at and many people therefore sit in the matrix with Jesus on their tongue with Christ on their tongue not living as he said they would the supernatural power of themselves still laying dormant locked behind the program inside them of the 3d identity and I can tell you this that you will drive out demons 
you will heal. You will pray in the language of spirit, in tongues, light language, whatever you want to call it. You will change the world. You will walk in a space without any fear, none, none whatsoever. You will not fear the demonic because Christ will be in you, not as an idea, not as a concept, but in you. And so how could you fear the demonic with that power in you when it has dominion over it? And these will be the markings of one who's awoke, awoken from the matrix. And you will see many awakening from the matrix because they are speaking of non-duality. They are speaking of unity and oneness. And they are on the right path. Even if they are not using yet the term Jesus or Christ or anything like that, they are on the right path because they are awakening into the space and the energy of reality whereby the unconditioned love can move because they're moving in a space free of identification with the fallen identity, the 3D identity. And in that space, great love is known because that 3D identity is the conditioner of love. And so why do the fourth dimension do that to us? Well, they believe that they could control the twelfth dimension with technology and intelligence someday. But I can tell you they're wrong. But they can control the third. Sadly. But we can rise above it. God bless, guys. I love you all. Be well.